Hello and welcome back to Caden's Take. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about the All MLB team. If you didn't know what the All MLB team is, it's basically where former players, executives, and reporters vote on the best player at each position between the AL and NL, and they create basically a super team. And the fans were able to vote to get the top three, and then the execs and the former players, like I just mentioned, voted on the top three to make this team. I'm going to discuss my thoughts on it, whether or not I thought that that player should have gotten it, deserved it, or the second place guy should have gotten it over him. The MLB announced this last night, so let's get into it. So the first position is catcher, and they chose Salvador Perez of the Kansas City Royals. I think Salvador Perez had a great season. He had a great comeback season. He missed all of 2019 due to a Tommy John surgery, and he missed the beginning of 2020 because of another injury. And so he's been persevering to get back on the field, and I thought he did a great job this season. However, I feel like JT Relamito and Travis Diarmid, the numbers two and three catchers, both had better hitting seasons, and although Salvador Perez had a better catching season, I just feel like you got to give it to the best overall and around player. So I like Salvador Perez, and I think he had a great comeback season, but that means I think he should have won comeback player of the year, not catcher of the year, which should have gone to Relamito or Diarmid, in my personal opinion again. So at first base is Freddie Freeman. Now, I'm a huge White Sox fan, if you haven't figured out from my last video posting about the White Sox, and you'll probably find out if you watch more videos on this channel. But my thing, the thing is that Abreu had an MVP season. He was the best player in the AL by far. Freddie Freeman was the best player in MLB by far. There's no debate, really, or there is a debate between Freeman and Abreu, but it's not that big of a debate because Freddie Freeman posted insane numbers uh, with – and just beat beat Abreu in every punch. He beat him defensively. He beat him in all the stats offensively. He had an incredible season, and I have to give him props for it. He deserves the first baseman of the year. So next up over at second base is DJ LeMethu. I think DJ LeMethu was the best second baseman in baseball this year. I think the they got it right, and he deserved the award. Um, I mean... He he also won second baseman. He got this award last year as being the uh, MLB team second baseman, and I felt he deserved it then, and I think he deserves it now, winning the AL batting title and just having an incredible season on the Yankees. So next up, we have third base. Over at third base, they gave it to Manny Machado. Now, I don't like this pick, and it's not because I don't think Manny Machado has good on-field um good on field personality and how he treats the other players. It's not that it's that I just feel like his season was good in the beginning, but he started to slow down a lot at the end and Jose Ramirez who got the second team uh, award, his season was incredible. He started off doing a de- being a decent player hitting about 200 ish 250. And then he just took off. He, the final two weeks of his season, he ended with a 993 OPS, 17 homers, 16 doubles, and 10 stolen bases. I mean, Jose Ramirez's bat was ballistic. I think that he definitely deserved the award over Manny Machado, but they gave it to Manny Machado because Manny Machado had a more consistent season, whereas Ramirez's last couple weeks were insane, and the numbers that he put up were undescribable. So at shortstop, the other Padres left side of the infield is Fernando Tatis Jr. As well as Manny Machado, I don't feel like Tatis deserves the award as much as Seager and Turner do. I think Trey Turner was second in at batting average in the NL, and he had another incredible season. He lost to this. He didn't even get the second team nomination though, because Corey Seager got that uh, with a 943 OPS, 28 extra hit base hits in the regular season alone, and he won the MVP in the NL Championship Series and the World Series. So coming off of a World Series MVP, that doesn't matter when they're looking at the All Pro team, the All MLB team, All Pro team, whatever you want to call it. This is about their regular season opponent, uh, uh, regular season stats, and I definitely think Tatis did better than Seager in the regular season. But I think Turner still 
be both of them in the regular season. And so I'm a little bit upset that Turner didn't get a nomination, but at the same time, I understand why they gave it to Tatis, and I think he had a great year. Just I don't think he got this had the best shortstop of the year year. All right, so an outfield. So how they do the outfield is they don't choose a left fielder, right fielder, center fielder. They choose the three best outfielders. Now it happens to be one left field, one center field, one right field, but we'll get to that later. So the starting off, we're going to talk about Juan Soto. Juan Soto uh, was amazing. He only played 47 games because of a positive COVID-19 test just a couple days before the team's home opener, but he made up with for all that, batting 351 as an as, an, as his average and had the MLB best of a 1.85 OPS and he's only 21. I mean, this guy was incredible. And not only did he do it young, but he dominated young. And I think that he definitely deserved this award as he was the best outfielder this season, in my opinion. So next up is Mike Trout. Here's my thing with Mike Trout. I don't really think that he deserves it over to the guys that made the second team. I think Mike Trouton is an incredible ball player, and I definitely like don't hate on him or anything. But at the same time, I just don't think he deserves it after his season. Yes, he did have a good season. I'm not saying he had a bad season. But at the same time, in my opinion, Acuna and Yastrzemski both had better years than he did and deserve it more than he did. He finished fifth place in MVP voting, which he also didn't deserve. And he has... um. Or he had a 993 OPS, which, yes, that is a very good stat. But then you look at the rest of it, 17 homers and 46 RBIs. I mean, that's a all-star performance, but not a best center fielder in the MLB performance. So I definitely, and I understand it was a 60-game season. I understand all that. But go look at a guy like Abreu, who had 20 home runs and 60 RBIs. And then you look at Mike Trout, and I understand they played different positions and that is part of it, but at the same time, there's players out there that had better years than Trout did, so I don't really uh, like the fact that he gets the honor and other players do. At the same time, I understand they can't give it to three shortstops. They can't give it to Freeman and Abreu, but there is other play outfielders besides Trout that I feel like could also have deserved it, and I think they should have given it to them over Trout. So the third outfielder that won the award was Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts in the postseason was electric, but even looking in the regular season, he batted 927 as an, as his OPS. He had 16 homers, 10 steals, and was second place in the MVP vote. And he got his another World, World Series reign. He won one in Boston two years ago. He won another great one this year in L.A. I think that he's an electrifying outfielder and a, has a great bat for his 5'9 size. And so a power bat, really. And I think he had a great season, and I think he definitely deserved the award as well. So moving on to DH, we have Marcelo Ozuna from the Braves. And Ozuna uh, only had a one-year deal with the Braves, actually. And so he had to come in and make an impact. And on, in the, Bra- on the Braves, he had a three thirty eight average and with 18 homers and 56 RBIs, leading the NL in both homers and RBIs. I mean, that's just incredible. He, when batters came up to the, or when player, yeah, when teams had to go play the Braves, they saw, all right, we got to go hit, pitch to Freddie for Acuna first, then Freddie Freeman second, and then Marcelo Zuna third. And that's just a trio that you don't want to mess with one of them. Now you got to mess with three of them. And Ozuna just killed the ball. And whenever Freeman got on, Ozuna knew it was his time to step up and he made magic happen. And so he definitely deserves this award, in my opinion. So now we're on to starting pitchers. So before we continue with the pitchers, they decided to do five pitchers, just like a regular rotation, and then two relievers. And that's for the first team and second team. So we're going to start off with Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber was in a unanimous AL Cy Young Award pick. I mean, there's not much to debate here. He was the best pitcher in all of baseball this season. He posted a 163 ERA with 122 strikeouts. He he deserved this award unanimously, and there was nobody that can even argue him as best pitcher this season. The only person that you could make the argument about, however, is Trevor Boyer. Trevor Boyer got the NL Cy Young, 
and he had a very good season, posting a 173 ERA with a 795 whip, and again, got the NL Cy Young Award. He had another great season. He definitely deserved it. I'm just saying, Shane Bieber, no doubt, no questions asked. Trevor Bauer, yes, he deserves it a lot, but Shane Bieber was on a different level pitching this year. All right, so next up is you, Darvish. As much as I hate to admit it, and I hate to admit it, this Cubs pitcher deserved to be on the All-Pro team. Darvish had a 2.01 ERA, which was the er, uh, in 12 starts. He was victorious in eight of those 12 starts. And he had a 223 fielding independent pitching mark, which is his best season as a Cub. So not only was he pitching really well, but that infield behind him in his own glove was stopping balls from, uh, or players from reaching base and balls from leaving the infield. So I definitely think he deserves the award as much as I hate, and I mean hate, to admit it. So next up, we have Jacob deGrum. Jacob deGrum had a, even though he was a little bit short of getting his third consecutive Cy Young Award, he was the only, he was the only pitcher to obtain the AL ML. MLB honors this award for the second year straight. He posted a 2.38 ERA with 104 strikeouts and a 9.56 WHIP, which I mean, that's that's some really good stats. And he dominated just like he does every season. So lastly, we have Max Fried uh, from the Braves. Uh, he. He, even though he had no rotation behind him, he was in really not even a pitching, like a starting rotation behind him due to injury. He dominated uh, when he got the ball. He had a 7-0 and record with 225 ERA and 189 whip in 56 innings. Now, I know what you're thinking. 7-0, and that's pretty pretty good. Well, you, the other thing you have to look at is, again, I'm not undermining his 7-0 and start. But he had ten, he pitched in ten games or started in ten games in the regular season, excuse me, and in the in those ten games, the three that he didn't get a win or loss count, two of them they lost, and so when he was on the mound, he was on and he was firing. When they pulled him, like I just said, the bullpen didn't really help him that much. But at the same time, he had an incredible season. He deserves it. And recapping really quickly, I think all five of these starting pitchers deserve it. They are the best starting five in all of MLB. Under the relief pitchers, Liam Hendricks uh, definitely deserves it. Liam Hendricks was the winner of the... Uh, I forgot what his name is now. Uh, Mariano Rivera, the Mariano Rivera Award winner, as the best reliever in baseball. He deserved that award. He deserves this award. He was dominant, 178 ERA with a 671 whip, and he had a 1233 strikeout to walk ratio with 14 saves and 24 appearance, appearances. The A's didn't always use him as their closer. They sometimes brought him in to uh, take out the big guns that they had to uh go pitch against and so he wasn't a primary or he was a primary closer but the only, the reason he has 14 saves and 24 appearances isn't because he was failing in the ninth it's because those other 10 times he came in to face big bats just for one an instance to get them out of the game nick anderson was the other relief pitcher of the year and although i think nick anderson had a great season posting a, five, a 55 ERA and a 49 whip and 16 and a third innings pitch in the regular season. Again, and again, a regular season is all that counts, but his postseason was atrocious. He never, he didn't really do anything for the Rays in the postseason except for hurt them. But my thing with Nick Anderson is that he didn't deserve it as much as Devin Williams and Brad Hand did the two second team winners. I thought it should have been Devin Williams and Liam Hendricks, and I definitely think that Devin Williams and honestly Brad Hand were robbed from this slot over Nick Anderson. And although he had a great regular season, he didn't didn't uh, have as dominant the dominance that Hand and Williams did for their teams. So I just. Uh, put a list of this. So here's a second team. So we have catcher JT Relamito, first baseman Jose Abreu, second baseman Brandon Lowe, third baseman Jose Ramirez, shortstop Corey Seager, DH Nelson Cruz, outfield being Acuna, Yastrzemski, Conforto, uh, starting pitchers being Lamette, Cole, Kershaw, Maeda, Ryu, 
uh, and relief pitchers being hand in Williams, like I just talked about. Now, a couple things I want to talk about this team. I've already made my opinion on whether or not I think the player deserved it and whether this player deserved it more. But just look at this. If you look at the starting pitchers uh, in this second team, Kershaw, Maeda, and Ryu, the last three, all three of them were from the Dodgers last season. It was the first time in um, or in M- the Scion voting that the two players left their team to go to two different teams and then were second and third place in the Scion voting. That was Ryu and Maeda leaving the Dodgers and going to the Blue Jays and the Twins and getting second and third in the Scion voting. But you also have to look at the fact that Cole, Maeda, and Ryu, just take out Kershaw and put in Cole, all three of them were free agent pitchers. I mean, or last season in 2019. And they all had great seasons coming off of, or coming into a new organization and getting getting traded, or, or I'm sorry, getting signed by somebody new, didn't phase them. They came into the ball club and was as dominant as they could have been. The other thing that I want to bring up is Acuna, Freeman, Ozuna, Fried. Acuna is in the second team, yes, but the other three are all in the first team. No other team has more than one player in the first team, and they have three. They have all. They have Freeman, Ozuna, Freeman at first, Ozuna DH, and Fried at uh, uh, pitcher. That is amazing when you think about it. And you even look at, or I'm sorry, the Padres had Machado and Tatis, but they still had three. And then the second team, you had Acuna. Well, yes, you see that Jose Ramirez, Brad Hand, they're both on the Indians. There's other twos, like Seager and Betts, but nobody has four players on this team other than the Braves. The Braves had great hitting, and they had Max Fried to lead their rotation. That was that. They did great. The other thing that I want to bring up is think about all these free agents. DJ LeMayhew, uh, on this list, Relamito, uh, you got Nelson Cruz, you have, um, uh, you have Brad Hand, you have Liam Hendricks, and there's probably some that I'm forgetting right now just because uh, I'm not looking at the list. Um, But those guys that won this award, a lot of them are free agents. Even the third DH was Michael Brantley, and he's a free agent. So a lot of these players getting these awards are free agents. So even though there isn't really, and Trevor Boyer even, and so even though there isn't the big, big dogs in free agency this year, like Garrett Cole was last season, there are still players that are winning this award and saying that I'm the best at my position and then going into free agency, that it would be foolish for teams to not double check before they go on and talk to somebody else. And although I agree Adam Eden was the right move for the White Sox, look at these players. I mean, the White Sox made a smart decision. They made a strategical decision. They said, we want to get other players that cost money. So we're not going to go big on a uh, uh, right fielder. We're going to get Eden, who we know is going to do the job we want him to do. But other teams and the White Sox, probably for a guy like Hendricks, hopefully, fingers crossed, they're going to see these free agents that are being that are being crowned the best at their position. And not only is it going to boost their capital, but it's going to boost their team. So I don't understand why these guys aren't getting offers left and right, because they are just proving that they deserve it. All right. Thank you so much for listening to my thoughts on the all MLB team for 2020. If you liked the video, please like and consider subscribing so that you can follow up on other videos I post. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Thank you very much.